Do you always feel like you're running short on inspiration, not sure where to look? How about some tips and tricks for creating expert sketches that'll keep you creating? I'm Nicole, and welcome to Sketch Starters. Once you see the simple process, you'll be seeing potential sketches everywhere, not just in magazines. It only takes a few simple tools, a pencil and eraser, some cardstock cut for templates, a ruler, paper or a notebook, and some reference photos. First, let's create some templates. To create a perfect size down template for any card size you make, all you have to do is cut it into quarters. For example, an A2 template is a quarter of a four and a quarter by five and a half panel, so two and an eighth by two and three quarters. If you want a standard slimline template, it's a quarter of a three and a half by eight and a half panel, or one and three quarters by four and a quarter. I create these in cardstock so they're sturdy enough to trace over and over. My reference photos today are taken from a recent home magazine, but you can find inspiration images from personal photos, Pinterest, or any other visual source. I have four ideas that we'll create to give you some idea of how you can translate a complex image into a simple sketch to use over and over again in your card making and even scrapbooking. I'm starting off with this grouping of images. They just happen to be in a card format. Can you see? Well, we'll focus on this one with the bowl and plate to create a double circle sketch. First, I'll make a canvas using my cardstock template. Then I'm gonna go ahead and start sketching in the shapes that I see. I really like to keep them kind of arranged how they are. So I'm gonna have that one circle go off of the plate. And you're gonna see here that I'm really not a great artist and I don't draw perfect circles. That's what an eraser is for. I'll also erase the overlapping areas and the parts that go outside the template. To finish, I'll take that spoon and I'm gonna turn it into a simple rectangle for a sentiment strip. I could add more detail for sequins or enamel dots. Um, but I think really I'm just going to keep this pretty simple. So I add in a little bit of extra outlining there to really solidify what the shapes are going to be. And I'm popping in that sentiment strip that is indicated from the spoon. And you can see here that I might go for a few little extra details. Those would probably end up being like sequins or enamel dots, but I usually don't go that detailed. So I'm going to go ahead and remove those from this sketch. That really gives me the most flexible idea that I can have. So here it is in its finished design, and you can see that there's really a lot of possibility with this one. For the next sketch, I'm going to actually create a slimline. I found this article with some planners in a really nice arrangement. I liked all of those rectangular elements arranged over each other, so I thought that would be a really great focal point to start with. So I'm going to start sketching in all of those rectangular shapes and I used my slim line template to give me the perfect canvas to start with. And then as I'm putting in these rectangles, I'm going to erase the overlapping areas that help indicate all the different layers that are going to happen. Overlapping rectangle shapes are a really great way to introduce lots of pattern and texture into a layout. You might have actually seen another recent sketch starter where I did just that. I'll link to it above so you can check it out. Sometimes you'll need to take liberty with a layout. For instance, the inspiration is in more of an A2 shape, but I really want to stretch this out to a slimline. So remember, this is all about inspiration, not replication. In that way, you can feel free to move elements to make them more balanced or to make them um, something a little bit more unique. You might even add something that's not in the inspiration, or you might take a liberty with a certain element. For instance, I'm going to add in this unexpected circle here, which is actually that little bubble that has the text in it from that image. It's not really a part of the design, but it, in a way it is because the publisher put that in there very specifically so that it would stick out. And I think in a card design that would really stick out as well. So in this, I added a little more detail by putting some lines in the background to indicate pattern paper. But you'll see here in my finished sketch that I didn't include that because those squares might end up being patterned and I don't want to force myself into having to use a pattern background. For our third sketch here, we're going to use an advertisement. And ads are particularly well suited for creating sketches as they're already really highly designed and arranged. In this one, I'm going to create an A2 landscape sketch. So I just need to turn my template 90 degrees for the perfect canvas. 
Now, I have to admit, this is going to kind of be an interesting looking sketch, but I'm excited to use it in a future video. I'm starting off with a rectangle shape in the center and I canted it a little bit so it's not straight on. Um, that's going to be a nice little jaunty change for this project. Then I added in all of these circles and I'm even adding in some half circles to mimic all of those little citrus fruits. That's initially what I was really drawn to is all of those circles and half circles and how they really played well on each other. But again, in the end, I might really scale this back because it's just really a lot going on and sometimes less is more when you're talking about a sketch. I can always add more later, but with this final sketch, I really see something more like a candle with some tree ornaments or perhaps another element with a couple of flowers around it. It really is a cool idea. For this final example, I really wanted to stretch my creative eye. So let's take a look at this gorgeous cake. How can we make this into a fairly general sketch? Really, um, I was inspired by the image that uh, it gave me an idea to use a vase upside down as a cake platter with maybe a slice of cake on top of it. And you might actually end up seeing that at some point. But I wanted to make this a little bit more general. To start off with my sketch, I did make it a little bit more specific. But as you'll see here, I'm starting to box out those pieces. I really like to stick to squares, circles, and triangles when I do my sketches because that really gives me the most flexibility and doesn't box my mind into a specific element that I have to add to a project because I'm trying to follow a sketch. So I really liked some of the other little trailing elements that happened in here with the flowers that fell off of the cake plate here. So I thought I would add in a few more elements, but you'll see in the finished sketch that I opted for something even simpler with less circles. I could add some more in later or keep it scaled back. It all just kind of depends on what elements I choose to bring in in the end. So there you go. This is a really quick look into how I create sketches and how you can too. It really doesn't get any simpler than that. I hope this inspires you to look at the world around you and to find sketch designs for your own projects. As for me, I have four new sketches that I'll be using in the coming weeks, so stay tuned to see these ideas come to life. Thank you for joining me today. I hope to see you watching and commenting with my next sketch starter, but until then, happy crafting. Help support my craft education efforts by clicking on the subscribe button and the little bell so you'll get notified when I create new content just for you. If you're looking for something else to watch, how about one of these crafty videos?